So Earth is what's different. So how is this form different than any other form? And what, you know, what is about it that is based on the Earth? what is based on what is foundation of this form. So what I did, the first thing I did was I did the same thing that was done here. I tried to find the form that was inside the form. So inside the cube there is an octahedron. So I found out that inside the seven-sided form there was also a form, just like this one. And so the center of each polygon I found here, 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 here. I connected those points just like this was done and there is a new form. Another new form, the green one inside. So what I did next was is to try to find out more information about this form. So what I did was I just put it into edges only. So the seven-sided form here, okay, has only edges. There's no faces. The next thing I did with it was I put it into points only. This is what it looks like in points only. So now points only would be just the points, and this first one is just the edges. So there's something here that I'm doing and trying to find out where this form is coming from, and this is the process I used. In this process, I found where the form comes from. From this study, I found out the geometry two-dimensionally where this form comes from and it comes from three pentagrams there they are one here one here and they do not line up this drawing is all based on two circles they're the golden mean proportion between those two circles and all of this is drawn without any measurements all I have to do is take a compass and a straight edge not a ruler but a straight edge and I can draw this perfectly every time any size and no matter where, any, anywhere on any kind of paper without any measurements. So you wonder where is the form in this? So I take this off and this is the form put together which is seven. Again the seven-sided form. So I tried to figure out how these elements would work in sculpture. So I found out what was different. You saw all the things that I had that were different. Now you're going to find out how about changing. How can I change the seven-sided form? I, um, I have no idea how to do that, so I first found out that uh, when I put it into edges, um, I couldn't push it down, I couldn't twist it, it's too strong. This is a very strong form. So the only way I thought of changing, how could I change this form, was to put it into uh, movement. Okay, and, and that changed it. It changed into a bell. And that bell also has two circles, one on the outside, one on the inside. And there's also a lot of black lines. I don't know if you can see those in the camera, but inside there, there are a tremendous amount of things going on. There's forms going on in there inside that those black lines indicate. And I have figured out where the black lines are, the distance apart from them, and where they're coming from. And that is important because those are basically shadows that are coming off the light source. And those shadows mean that there is a form going on inside through movement. Not, not through Earth, but through what's changing. So I found out that that's how I could change the form. And of course, that is a bell. Now I use an example here of minimum surfaces with the cube. So if you take the cube and you put it into soap, and you bring it out, there is a perfect cube inside the outside cube that is all curves there are no straight lines so another way that I could change the form is put it into minimum surfaces and minimum surfaces is everything all geometric forms are trying to become spheres and so the cube was trying to become a sphere I did the same thing with this one I put it into soap and I got this form this is the first seven-sided bubble. 
So what we found two ways to change this through the water process. Uh, one is concave and one is convex. Isn't that interesting? And yet, both of them come from straight lines. Now, somewhere along this process of earth and water, I am trying to find where this form is coming from. I found it two-dimensionally. It came from three pentagrams. But I want to find out where it comes three-dimensionally. Of course, the next stage is air. And air is the octahedron. So now we've had the cube, icosahedron, the octahedron. The octahedron is air. Now one thing about the air part is that the air can go into the cube. And of course here it is again. Just like we started out. Now what is happening here is air is everything that reverses. So this is what changes. I'm sorry, this is what's different, this is what changes, this is what reverses. I figured that inside out is a reversal. You go from the center of the form to the outside of the form. So I had to find the center of this form, and once I did, I was able to turn it inside out. So this is the new form again, and this is this formed inside out. And to show that, to find out that it's lawful, because all of these things that you've seen so far are all lawful, they're not uh, subjective at all. So the way to do that is to find out if this is lawful is to be able to put it back into its original shape. And now you have the two, seven, the two forms, seven-sided. So I applied this reversal here is I found out then if I can reverse the seven-sided form, I should be able to reverse the bell. So I was able to turn the bell inside out. Now here's a brand new bell never seen that is an inside-out bell. So if we go backwards and we see uh, water, what is uh, changing, uh, you also have to put that into uh, a form of lawfulness, which is what geometry is all about. So this is the geometric drawing okay, of that form and how it comes into being. Basically, may not be here, but that doesn't mean that we can't work with something that can't be here or there isn't a, a way of studying it. And that's what the earth, water, air, and fire, the different forms, are indicating to me on how to find these things.